Hey everybody, I'm Charlie Yarber with Fixated Real Estate. I have flipped over 600 homes, and in my career, I have realized there's been a lot of mistakes that I've done over the years. There's also been a lot of mistakes I've noticed other people doing. Take it from me right now. The number one reason why most people fail in this business in the long run, not the short run, is because they do a poor job tracking their resources and their financials and actually becoming a real estate investor in this business. We invest in real estate. If you're investing, you're investing money, and that includes managing finances. That's what it's all about. So if you want to become successful in this business in the long run, you got to get good at money fundamentals. Now, one of the things I'm going to go over, which is the biggest thing that I see people miss, especially when they're flipping houses and doing the burst strategy, buy, rehab, rent, refinance, repeat, is that they don't know how to track their actual money within a project. I'm going to show you right now how easy it is to manage this throughout your project. I'm going to show you the spreadsheets I've used. I'm going to show you guys what we use currently right now uh, so that you can use this for yourself. It just takes a little bit of time every week to put aside and make sure that you could be more successful in the long run. So trust me, this is something you must do. And it's so simple that most people don't do it. So let's get after it right now. So if you're still watching this video because I said we're going to talk about finances, then good for you because this is going to help you in the long run. If you're flipping houses or doing the birth strategy or doing any kind of rentals at all, you must be able to track where your money's going within a project. Now, fix and flip's an easy one to kind of go over because there's a lot of money that goes out when it comes to flipping a house. You got to buy the house. You got to pay, you got a bunch of expenses, all that type of stuff. You have a lot of rehab going on in a project. And if you're like me, you use different subs, general contractors, materials, Home Depot, all that stuff. A lot of expenses can go out the door, especially if you're doing multiple projects. And if you're running four, five, six, ten 10 projects at a time, and you don't know where all that's going, it's just one big bucket that all the money's going out towards or whatever then you're gonna fail in the long run in this business. First thing that comes up is that most of us get so busy in this business that we've put off tracking our finances. We put off doing the reconciliation that we need to do on our books. And we absolutely hate doing it. Most of us do. I don't like doing it and a lot of people don't. So we put it off to the end. And then what happens? End of the year comes around, your CPA is asking for some financials. You send them some bank statements. You really don't know where the money's going and it's a mess. Maybe you file a extension on your tax return uh, and you start like figuring it out. And then you spend an entire week at one point in your career trying to figure out where all your money is, where it all went, what all the expenses went to so you can get something to your CPA so they can finally file your taxes. I'm not sure if that story relates to anybody watching this right now, but that was definitely me for my first couple of years in this business. File an extension, deal with it later. File an extension, deal with it later. And then one day I'd have to deal with it and I'd be pulling out shoe boxes of receipts. I'd be going over spreadsheets. I'd be looking at my bank statements. I'd be trying to figure out where did all my money go? Whether this is re was this rehab? Was it not? Was what project was this for? And it was a mess and it sucked. If that's you, then you're gonna like this video. If that isn't you and you haven't gotten busy enough, that's gonna be you, it might be you one day. And if you don't do that anymore, congratulations, because I can tell you right now, I love never doing that ever again, and I never will. So another issue, let me paint the picture. Let's say that you buy a project, right? You're gonna buy a project, a fix and flip, you're gonna put $50,000 into it, right? So you get a general contractor to start working on the project and you're gonna do a down payment. Maybe pay him 10,000 bucks down payment on their project, right? Cool, so you write a check for that. Now, all of a sudden you need to buy some, maybe some materials. Maybe you need to hire a subcontractor here and there. Maybe you have some credit cards that you go put out there because you start paying for like different types of materials. Maybe you pay for the lumber. Maybe you go to Home Depot. Maybe you go to a lighting store. Maybe you go to a plumbing store. Maybe you're doing all this stuff yourself. You're picking it up yourself and it's just swipe the credit card, write a check. You'd hire in another contractor. And then all of a sudden you have a GC wants another payment. You make another payment. That's just one project. And you might have anywhere between five to 50 different transactions on your credit card and check payments and so forth going out to be able to manage one project. Now, if you times that by three projects, four projects, you do 10 in a year, five at a time, 10 at a time, it can get messy very fast. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you something called Excel. This is a very basic spreadsheet. I'll show you what I do today, but I'm gonna show you what I did for years. I literally used this spreadsheet for years. And here's the trick too. You don't need me to send you the spreadsheet. You don't need anybody to send you the spreadsheet. You don't need to buy some fancy program. You can make this Excel spreadsheet in less than five minutes. That's how easy this spreadsheet is. What most people fail at doing is the habit of sitting down once a week, 
for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour max, depending on how many projects you got and filling in the spreadsheet. Now, here's what we do here. I'm going to show you. I'm going to share my screen. Check it out. Boom. This is how easy it is, ladies and gentlemen. So we put the address of a property up top. And then we write, then we put a uh, simple equation that basically says the su equal the sum of whatever the column down here. And we have these basic inputs here of invoice, the amount we paid, the date we paid it, and the method of payment. So I'll give you an example. So let's say that I have a GC contract deposit. That's going to be my payment that I'm making to somebody. And that's going to be what's on the memo line of a check. And I'm going to pay them $10,000. And then I'm going to pay them, let's say today is nine. Uh, September 4th, 2022. Oops. September 4th, 2022. And my name of my company is Fixated Real Estate. So I do Fixated Real Estate, check number 1010. Done. Mail the check, hand the check off, completed. Let's say I go to Home Depot and I buy tile. And I spent $300 on tile on 95, oops, 95. 522 and I used my Sapphire credit card. Done. This is how simple this is, ladies and gentlemen. Now you collect your Home Depot receipts or you collect your invoices or whatever, and you sit down once a week and you input this on your spreadsheet for each property. Notice how I have it just for one property up here. You don't do this for all the properties combined on one spreadsheet. You do one spreadsheet per property. Now let me show you what happens when you're done filling this out completely uh, so that way you can see what I'm talking about here. So this is an actual property I did in 2016. That's how long ago this was. And the reason why I'm showing you a 2016 project is because that's how long ago I started. I stopped using this uh, spreadsheet and I switched over to something new that I'll show you in a second. But it's still the same concept. Everything we do for accounting hard costs, that's what we call this, accounting hard cost sheet, we do in some sort of spreadsheet fashion. We just do a little bit differently these days because we have so many team members. I'm going to go over why this is so important. So this is a property here that we completed. Now you can see these are all the subs, different people that we used, right? And this is the amount we paid. So uh, Jazz Construction was a as a company that we use in Washington. Forty six fifty five for deposit for a roof on six thirty sixteen. We used our fixated real estate and we wired him the money, right? Same down here. You can see this is a check we wrote, whatever Sapphire uh, misspelled Sapphire on that one. Uh, what date we sent it, the amount, the progress payment. And this is at the end of the day, how much money we spent on this project. So every single line item is a different payment we made and see how messy this can get. At the time of this project at 2016, I had 23 active projects going on at one time. And if all that money is coming out of the same bank account, right? who knows how much money I'm making on these projects unless we're tracking it. Now, I know what some of you guys might be thinking, why don't you just use QuickBooks? Well, the answer is we do. We love QuickBooks. Now, something that you can do with your bookkeeper is you could do something called classify, right? Or class, sorry, class the different projects. So this project here that I brought up was a, is on 34th Avenue in Seattle. So I would class inside QuickBooks 34th Avenue. And the same spreadsheet that I just showed you, we would take those inputs and put it into QuickBooks. Now, why, why not do it one time in QuickBooks? Why do it on a spreadsheet and also in QuickBooks? There's a big reason why. One, I'm not the best at QuickBooks, but my bookkeeper is. I'm good at it now, but I'm not the best at it. So at the time that I wasn't that good at it, I knew that I can use this Excel spreadsheet like I showed you. So I would just input that stuff there. Two, the reason why is that as you build a team up and you get more people involved, not everybody should have access to your QuickBooks account so they can see the expenses going in and out of a project. But everybody on my team can have a shared Google Sheet right? Or, or in a shared Excel spreadsheet inside Dropbox. And they can see the expenses going there, or they can add the expenses into the project themselves into that spreadsheet. So the second reason, breaking it down is simple. I don't want my team to have access to my entire QuickBooks account. I want them to have access to spreadsheets. Another reason why we use the spreadsheet is it's a double entry so that we can reconcile easily. If we have multiple people spending money on different credit cards, different bank accounts for a project, we need to reconcile that in QuickBooks and vice versa. So we have two inputs so we can reconcile together to make sure we're getting accurate statements for each project. This is really, really important. And the main reason why I do it today on a different spreadsheet is so that my whole team can use it, but also my bookkeeper, this is where if you want to level up to another level, your bookkeeper has access to that spreadsheet as well. And they could use that to reconcile within your QuickBooks or whatever you use software you're using uh, for your actual set of books. 
so that they can do that and they can look at it and they don't have to bother you. That's the most important part. They don't have to bother you about asking where check number 1011 got paid to or this credit card transaction on Home Depot. What was that for? If you're like most people that have a bookkeeper, you're going to get a once a month bookkeeper that reconciles your books maybe once every couple months. And you're going to get a fat list Excel, Excel spreadsheet saying these are unreconciled issues on your books. Please tell us what all these expenses are for. I hated getting those emails from my bookkeeper because it ruined my day and I'd have to sit down for a couple hours just to figure this stuff out and get it back to him. So what did I do is I made these spreadsheets. And I sent those spreadsheets to my bookkeeper or gave them full access on a shared drive so that they can look at that stuff for it first. So today, what I do is if my bookkeeper sends me unreconciled aspects for our fixed and flips or burrs, then I respond back saying, I'm not looking at this unless you can tell me that you went through all of our accounting hard cost spreadsheets. If they've done that, then I'll look at the unre on the unreconciled. If they say, oops, I haven't done that, then I don't open that sheet. I say, go back to the spreadsheets, make sure those items are, are not reconciled in there. And you can do that yourself first, then send me the remaining amount and we'll reconcile that. Hope that makes sense. That's a lot of heavy stuff. So I also want to go over why this is super crucial, important as you build your business. If you're going to get at any point where you're going to raise private money or have other people invest in your deals or have to file taxes, right? You're going to need to know where your money is going. And if you can sit down and show maybe a private lender or somebody that's going to invest in joint venture with you or provide you more capital or go down to a bank and you can show them, hey, here's five projects I've done. Here's how I track my finances on each of them. Here's to the penny what I spent on them. And if you show what I purchased it for, how much I spent on it, where all that money went, right? And this is the net profit I made on the deal at the end of the day, which you should be able to calculate once you have a spreadsheet like this and you add in your other sales costs and so forth to however you bought the property. And you can show them this is your process. This is how you track this type of stuff. You're not looking like some sort of amateur anymore. You're looking like a professional business that knows what they're doing. Every large scale fix and flipper, every large scale burr has something like this where they have two sets of inputs, one on a spreadsheet of some sort and one inside their QuickBooks or whatever accounting software they're using. And this is what we all do. So this is a secret that I'm telling you to do for yourself. If you ever want to get a line of credit, if you ever want to have less stress in your life, then knowing where your money's going and being able to show bank, show credit union, show other people how your money is managed is going to give you the credibility that you need to be able to get more money to be able to leverage into real estate. So let me show you guys what I do today and why this is so important to my business now. At any moment, at any time, I can now find out where my projects are financially and know that they're up to date. My entire team has access to what I'm about to show you. My, my bookkeeper has access to what I'm showing you. Anybody on my team can open this file up, input an expense, and it can be tracked because my bookkeeper is going to see it later because they reconcile twice a week for me now, uh, and they'll input it into QuickBooks. So this is what this program is also, uh, you, you can use on an app uh, as well. So my team can use it from their phone. I can use it from my phone. Uh, it's a habit that we've ingrained into everybody on the team, including myself over the years, to not put off tracking the financials. It is such a pain in the butt. I've said this in the video so many times already. When you put this stuff off and it just backfires on you later in your life, it's going to make your life very frustrating if you do this later and don't do it now. So this is what we use today. Uh, we use a program called Smartsheet. I don't recommend this for everybody. You can use this. You can do the same thing I'm about to show you using Google Sheet. Uh, but we use Smartsheet for a lot of other things uh, in our business. Uh, and it is very, it, it's, it could be expensive. Uh, and it might not be right for you, but you can do exactly what I'm going to show you here on Google Sheet for free. Use that. Uh, don't use Smartsheet unless you want to go down the crazy rabbit hole that we've done on this program. So uh, this is how this is a, pro a project we literally just sold a couple months ago. Uh, it was a big, big project for us. It took a long time with permits and issues and da, 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 da. So something that we do here, you can see that we spent $160,000 on this project. Uh, we had a GC contract. Uh, with them for 48,000. We had some back charges that we were able to do on them. Uh, we now break down into the project, uh, our back charges for the GCs, we show them here. And, but the same thing, if you notice up here at the top, invoice, invoice four. So this is who we paid. This is what it was for. This is the amount. Uh, if it was multiple items or m multiple payments for the same line item, it shows what the total is. Uh, for instance, we paid $3,000 deposit for a roof. 
And we also then paid 3618 for a roof. So the t- combined total 3000 plus 3618 is 6618. So we can know that's what we paid for the total item. The date sent still there. Uh, this is how our method of payment, Upper Zell, GTFM, whatever, all that stuff. Uh, is it in QuickBooks? This is the my favorite thing now too. This is how I communicate with my bookkeeper without having to talk to my bookkeeper. We have a column in here that's just a checkbox that basically if we pay something, they're looking at it in two factors. If I see a lot of empty check boxes here, that's telling me my my bookkeeper is not updating things into QuickBooks and they haven't looked at the spreadsheet for some time. So if these were all empty check boxes here, that means that gives me a warning sign saying my bookkeeper has not reconciled this stuff into QuickBooks. And if it's been weeks, then that's telling me my bookkeeper's not doing their job. Uh, was it paid, right? So can were we confirmed that it was paid or not? And is in the invoice in Dropbox? This is something we sometimes mess up. As you can see, not everything is saved in there because some of it's credit card payments, whatever. But um, the, and then these are just notes if we need notes on it. So I'm a big fan of the QuickBooks file. I'm a big fan of the, is it paid or not? And is invoice and Dropbox method of payment? If you remember, it just, it's the exact same spreadsheet we had in Excel. It just has a little bit more collaboration involved in it. My whole team could open this up. My bookkeeper can deal with it. They see the title of the property. I removed the address so you can't find it. Uh, and they could see where the method of payments are, who we paid, yada, yada, yada. So a very basic blank one, same thing, invoice, uh, invoice for amount, line item, so forth. This is, we just open this up and we just start inputting things as we pay it. So if you use Google Sheets for the same thing, you can make a payment right at the cash register. And while you're walking out the door, you can open up your Google Sheets and put it on there, save it, be done. So another trick that I've done too, is that if I've had a lot of payments going out, I created an email address accounting at like whatever, right, uh, entity. And I would just forward invoices to that email address. And the only person that had that email address is maybe me. And every time that I got invoices that were paid or receipt transactions or whatever, or if something that I had to reconcile later, I just couldn't deal with it at that time. I would just email it to that email address. And my job once a week minimum was to make sure that there was nothing in that email address. So that way it was done. Did that happen every week? No. Did it happen most weeks? Yes, absolutely. Today, the process is a little bit simpler for us. I don't touch anything uh, and everybody else does it all. That's the goal to get to. And I could just look at it to make sure the processes are being followed and check on them. Because if you, what is it? There's a phrase out there, um, expect what you inspect. There you go. That's the phrase. You can only expect what you inspect. So every now and then I got to jump in. I do it maybe once every couple of weeks now. And I inspect what I'm expecting from everybody on my team to track the finances correctly. Trust me when I say this again, over and over and over again, your life will be infinitely better in the future. Your future self will thank you. If you just track where your money is going on your projects, you can print. If you're like me, when I first started out, I take these uh, Excel spreadsheets for accounting hard costs. I would literally put them into PDFs and I would send them my CPA and my CPA loved having them. Simplify your process, guys. I hope you liked this video. It was a lot. It was a little heavy. If you have questions, ask them in the comments here. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe to this video. Check me out on Instagram at Tarl Yarber, and I'll see you on the next video.